Welcome to the Challenge Podcast, brought to you by Raider Concealment. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Challenge Podcast. We've got Ashley Williams down here with us today. Of course, you guys know Brad. What's up? And my son, Corey Carroll. And uh, guys, we, first off, we appreciate you guys being with us today. I know you guys have had a long day at work and I appreciate you guys coming in. So why don't we start with that first off and just, Ashley, won't you tell us what you do, you know, work-wise, if you go to school and, and just start with that. Okay, yes, I work at Ace Hardware. Um, been there for four years and I'm a full-time student at Columbus Tech going okay. for my RN degree. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Nice. That's Thank great. You. Thank you. All right, Corey, man, what do you do all day? Uh, fix cars, write estimates. I'm the production assistant at Joe Hudson's Collision Center, which is a body shop. And uh, fix cars, go to school, and come home and ride, and every now and then go hunting. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're into uh, motocross, right? Yes, sir. That's what I was going to ask you guys. What do you What do you love to do You know, outside of hunting? And we're going to get into that, so you guys don't worry, but... Just trying to let you guys know a little bit about these guys and, and Ashley and and uh, find out what kind of drives them. So, uh, Corey, won't you, since Brad brought it up, won't you tell us about you know, your dirt bike experience and what you love to do outside of hunting? Uh, it's been pretty up and down. <clears throat> I'd say when I first started, it was a big learning curve just from playing most sports was just baseball, football my entire life. And then finally got the opportunity to actually ride when I first graduated and then um, had to kind of learn from the ground up and uh, had a couple injuries had a couple of uh-ohs <laughs> yeah uh, broken collarbone uh ankle knee um so it's been a fun ride ups and downs for sure um but i'd say for the most part i'm pretty thankful for the fact that i've been able to progress a lot and stay healthy and um, have pretty decent finishes and starts and things like that um obviously i think there's a lot of room to grow um but i enjoy it and it's a good thing to kind of get away from work and because there's no thinking involved and that's kind of my issue with a lot of things i kind of think too much <laughs> so uh it's a good thing that i don't not have be able to think and just go so <laughs> well i remember you know you you'd bought a, your first bike and you asked you know once you had ridden it for a little bit you said daddy why did you get me a four-wheeler instead of a motorcycle when i was younger and i said because i love you and i want you to live <laughs> four wheels are better than two when you're young. Right. So I guess you probably ridden plenty of four wheelers and all. Do you, oh, what yes. else do you like to oh, do? Oh yes, I, I love fishing, and camping, anything outdoors. And I just grew up in the country, so that's what I'm used to. Right. Um, you know, I, I live in the city now, which don't like it too much, yeah. but. I still have, you know, my dad's house and my hunting land that I can go to and, you know, do whatever I want. So it's good. Well, along those lines, who got you into hunting and what's your earliest uh, recollection, you know, being in the woods, you know, what squirrel hunting, whatever? Mm, okay. So my brother actually got me into hunting. Uh, me and him are four years apart. And so I was 12 whenever I actually got into hunting. I was 12 when I shot my first deer. Wow. Yeah. That's I'll, old I was. Yeah. When I shot my first deer, spike. Yeah, so about you that can long. just imagine me, little blonde head, walking with <laughs> yeah. a, a rifle through the woods. <laughs> um, but you know, it's pretty much a family thing. We yeah. keep it, you know, kind of small group that go out and you know camp and then hunt right. throughout the day, the weekend maybe. Yeah, so it's yeah, a it's, family tradition kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that's kind of how I grew up fun. with hunting with my dad and my my dad and granddad, my brother. Same so yeah, so Corey, uh, you know, she's got her memories of you know what she l remembers of the earliest days of hunting. So what's uh, what's your earliest memory? Do you remember the days of hunting with your BB gun with me? <laughs> I do not. Um, <laughs> you I slept remember, most of that. Yeah, I still do. Um, I remember going squirrel hunting every now and then. Um, I don't remember a lot of that though. I remember one time we were sitting at the we were hunting at the house and we were sitting next to this log. Yeah, and I don't yeah. remember how old I was, but this squirrel came like right next to us, and I was scared to death, shaking like crazy. And um, that was—I remember that just because that was that was kind of cool to see a, a squirrel that close. Yeah. Uh, but after that, I don't really remember much. Other so you don't remember your? I remember the big the big moments, but I don't remember the small moments. You don't? Um, do you remember your first deer, your doe? I don't remember what I wore yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you shot a doe after sleeping for the first two and a half hours. And you woke up from a nice long nap. Brad, you were with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're like uh, stretching. And I'm, 
you ready to go? And you're like, I think so. And I said, well, why don't we stay another 30 minutes, you know? And he said, yeah, we'll, we'll stay another 30 He's minutes. All the time. 30 minutes, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah, another, another 30 minutes. Another 30 minutes. It's he 10 30. I don't hunt till 12. <laughs> so... He's like, I'll, I'll never forget it. He said, I'll hunt another 30 minutes if we're going to see something. I'm like, <laughs> I can't promise that. Yeah, how do I know? But lo and behold, about 20 minutes later, I think five, six does stepped out, and you took the biggest one, made a perfect shot. And, you know, he's been hunting with me forever, and I've always shot the deer right at the shoulder. They go straight down, right. but that little 243, you know, I had him shooting behind the shoulder. So when the deer ran off, you thought you missed, and he, he gave me that, I missed? <laughs> Which I was like, well, why does he think that? But now I know, I mean, every deer he'd ever seen me shoot went straight down. And, right. I, you know, believe it or not, I've, I've had adults that are new to hunting come and tell me, you know, they bring me a deer in or something. I shot another one. This morning was actually a little bit bigger. I was like, did you miss or what? Well, I, he didn't fall. So it's like, that don't mean you didn't hit him, which blows my mind. Yeah. People that still think, if, yeah. you know, I mean, these are 25, 35 year old guys, too. So. Obviously, guys, you know, if you shoot at a deer and they don't fall, you need to go check, make sure there's no blood, no sign of a hit and everything, and, and even circle the, circle the area. Well, what's funny about that story is I was hunting about 100 yards from you guys, and I heard the shot, and I knew the quarter oh, was yeah. up, so I was really pumped up. So I instantly got down and come over, and I find Scott following Corey, filming him, because we had started filming for the show back then, and he says, you got to take this camera. And so I grab it and we finish filming the recovery and everything. We look at the footage later and when the first part when they're walking, the camera's just going everywhere. And as soon as I grab it, it just went, you know, steady. Corey watched it and he's like, it was like we was in a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> but he, you grabbed the camera, man. I told you you had to take over, yeah. man, because I was shook he up. He was shook I mean, up more than Corey was. Yeah, it was a great memory. I'll never forget it. Obviously, he's already forgotten it, but we've got <laughs> video to go back and show him when he, you know, when we get a chance. But it was a great moment. What about so, your first one? So... Uh, okay, like I said, I was 12. It was my birthday weekend, and me, my uncle, my cousin, and just a family friend, we were all there. So I'll say we stay the weekend. So Saturday night, everybody there shoots a deer but me. <laughs> so the next day, so my birthday, I think it was on the Monday. So Sunday morning, I wake up and I'm telling everybody, I'm shooting a deer today. I'm not leaving until I shoot <laughs> one. So I'm in the stand. Me and my cousin are sitting in the stand. And <clears throat> I was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, I could hear it was there was five doe who were walking, you know, straight towards us. And I look at her. I'm like, you already got one. You know, <laughs> just act like you don't see them. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so mm -hmm. I, I shoot my first one but it didn't drop and you know in my head i'm like oh i missed there you go i'm like no this can't happen <laughs> so i instantly just stand up in the stand turn around and drop another one <laughs> well that one did drop but so i go i get down and i go to find the first well it's probably about 30 yards from the first one yeah the, well the second one that dropped <clears throat> right so i got two yeah. Wow, that's yeah. a good way to start it, off. It was, it was really good. Plenty of meat for the freezer, oh, for sure. Yeah. What kind of gun are you using? Uh, at the time, I was using a two forty three. And that's pretty two forty three. Yeah, that seems to be a popular caliber for the younger yeah. guys and girls. And you know, right. it does the job. Oh, it doesn't it's, kick too bad. So. Yeah, yeah. I, you know that was. My goal at one time to shoot one with Corey's gun. I don't think I ever did it, but he loved that little 243. So you guys are hunting now, and, you know, I know how old Corey was. He was nine, I think, when he shot uh, his first buck, and your doe was you're probably seven. So I know both you guys started at a young age hunting, but uh, what keeps you going back? I mean, what is it about hunting? Is it you think it's because you got involved in it at such a young age? Or no, is honestly, there... I would say... Just being in the woods in the deer stand, it's peace. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just peace. Yeah, you can go mind. to sleep. Yeah, yeah, and you can take a nap. <laughs> Some of the best sleep in the world. Just getting back to nature and yeah. And, and then certain. if you do get one, or if you see anything, you get that adrenaline rush. Right. Yeah. So that's what keeps me going. So you, are you like me when you you can't see it, but you can hear a, a limb snap, or do you get excited? Just I do. You get like that, Corey? Oh, I get excited over a squirrel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you think it's a deer? But you yeah. know, after all the years that we've been hunting, which for me it's been fifty years. Yeah. I still get excited. 
I do I mean, too. When I, see I mean, one, even she like knows. Snap a limb. I, I still get it. I mean, if I quit getting it, then it's probably time to quit doing right. it. Right. Yeah. But it we just say still that. gets me excited. Well, we still like to eat them. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. True. But the dr drilling rush, I mean, and it's different for me with every deer. You know, I mean, sometimes a doe walks out and I get a little, you know, oh, it's going to happen. And then there's other times where I'm in. I, I'm like, what in the world? It's, it's a doe and it, you know, it ain't like a world record buck out there or anything. But uh, I guess that's kind of the drive that kind of keeps us going. I mean, you don't need drugs. You don't need alcohol. Just go hunt. And that's all the adrenaline rush you need right, right there. Well, you know, like we say all the time, it's all about the experience. It's not the size of the animal. Or yeah. It's all about the experience of, of being out there, getting back to nature and just being de-stressed. Yeah, one of one of my favorite memories is uh, when we got to take you to Africa for your graduation. And I know uh, I, I'd like for you to talk about that because that was a special trip for me. I, I was really hoping that you would uh, kind of get it, so to speak. Once, once we got there, it was more about the hunting. And I, I talked to Brad about it for years. You know, I want to make sure you were old enough to understand what's going on over there. And, you know, you don't really have that bad a day if the... The power goes out, you can't play your Xbox or whatever, and your girlfriend breaks up with you because you just went over there and saw a kid with two sticks and a rock, and he's happy as he can be, living in a mud hut. So, yeah, I would uh, say, um, I think all the hunting was fine, too. That was great, obviously. Well, what'd you shoot? Um, Let's think, just start with that, and then we'll... Well, I shot a kudu, springbuck, warthog, um, impala, and red heart of beast. Um, my favorite out of all of them would be the springbuck, just because um, the springbuck was the hardest, Yeah, and I never missed before. <laughs> and um you ain't got to hunt long before you can say that though and uh it was i don't know it was just most of, it was it was the hardest the most challenging and um when i finally got it it was it was like a tear up kind of moment just because it was such a bad shot and i was like man i, I know i can do so much better and yeah. um so seeing that and actually being next to it and then being able <laughs> to kind of experience everything outside of the hunting like i remember we went to uh um, like a flea market type thing, right? And uh, that was kind of cool, just because they're selling stuff that's like you know, like a dollar. It's like nothing to us, but it's it, they're, yeah. that's how they're making their money. Like you know, we're right. going to jobs that they're paying us way more than what we should be getting paid, probably. But they're right. going over there and not doing anything, but selling you know whatever they have. I mean, they, they ain't no telling how long they spent working on a carving or something, and they're it's getting like five small. five bucks so, yeah. for it. And it's it's crazy. Yeah, so but I think the most part was just kind of seeing the people. And experiencing experiencing the people that are around, um, you know, you while you're hunting. Obviously, the guys and all that stuff are kind of cool. Um, I really like Jock because he's kind of my age group, and mm -hmm. uh, he's kind of, you know, taking over his dad's business and that kind of thing. So he's 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 a good influence when it comes to hunting, and he, he knows oh, his stuff. He knows his stuff for sure. And uh, I think that was cool just to see how much he knows and just go on on the hunt and just kind of be in the truck and everything like that, and just to kind of. Go out and see different animals every day because you don't see that here. Right. So I think I, see I think animals every day. Yeah. it's just exciting because you know we get excited over a squirrel. I do. So <laughs> I think I'm these PHs kind of have to be like a, a good coach. You know, you you got some guys that you know you need to pat on the back and kind of stroke them, make them sure they feel good, and you got other guys you just need to kick in the butt. But you know. He, he talked about the spring buck, how difficult it was. You were there. Yeah. I mean, he he did make a bad shot, but I mean, it was for what you're used to. It was 220 something. Years. What was it? I don't remember. It was a long shot. I mean, I was having trouble finding it in the viewfinder, but he did make a bad shot, and uh, we did recover it. Got on it later with the help of a a dog, and it got to the point where he was so upset about it that he almost let it ruin the rest of his trip because, and you know. For me, and as a hunter and a, and a dad, that's kind of a proud moment for me sure. till they get to a certain point that we're not going to ruin this whole trip. Right. But here comes, you know, Jock comes along with a pitcher. You know, once we get back to camp, sitting around the fire, Corey's still got it, you know, dragging his lip. And he shows him a picture of a spring bug that had four or five holes in it. And he said, look at this. He said, you think you did bad today? He said, look at this. He's like, how terrible is that? He's like, you know, Corey perks up a little bit, you know, he said, that's pretty terrible. He said, 50 yards. He's like, wow, who was that? He's like, it was me. Wow. So, I mean, that's that's a, a special time to me because he knew you were down, being your age and all. He could relate to what you were going through. And, I mean, everybody's going to make a bad shot. It's going to happen. You just got to do like you did. You stayed with the blood trail. We stayed on it. We brought trackers in. We brought the dog in. You made a finishing shot. Give it every effort. To every effort. Yeah, I think it's a good right. learning experience too to just kind of go through that because it's yeah you know, it's it's obviously hunting, 
Yeah. Which is in the small scheme of things doesn't mean much, but you're able to kind of learn from that and take it to your life. So exactly. you, know, you mess up one time, but you have an, another chance, many more chances. Learn from to, your mistakes. To do better. So. Right. Right. We've, we've so. heard their stories, but we hadn't really talked about some of your, let's, you know, I don't want to go way back to granddad and all, but we can, we could hear that. And then I want to hear a hunting story, something crazy that's happened with, with me and you. Uh, Cause I've shared oh, a few, I shared a few today <laughs> with some of the guys and they all got a laugh at it. So I figured there are I'd so many, it'd be hard to pick one. But yeah, just real quick, I uh, grew up in hunting family from the time I could walk. My dad trained bird dogs and would take me bird dog hunting, turkey hunting, deer hunting. And back then there was not very much. I mean, no. if you saw a track, you felt excited. I yeah. mean, literally it was that and bad. And turkeys were worse. Yeah, even worse. But I just stuck with him and then I took a BB gun out and, you know, hunted squirrels and birds with that and just went to 22 and just progressed as I got older and I mean, it's always exciting when you finally get to sit for the first time and you're, you're yeah. by yourself deer hunting. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I can remember a lot of cold, cold mornings back then. We wear, you know, tube socks, uninsulated boots. Tight jeans. Tight jeans. Wonder why you're getting cold. And, you know, <laughs> that uh, cotton thermal and a yeah. jacket. You Look know? like a plucked chicken. <laughs> but uh, we've come a long way from that. But it's just gradually, you know, after I got married, I really got back into it more. Yeah. And then, of course, when we started the company... Had to get out of the house, right? <laughs> well, we won't go quite there. But uh, once we started the company, obviously, it just took off. I mean, yeah. we, we do that most of the year now. You know, we're gone from home three or four months of the year. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. And we've has had so many memorable hunts, man. It's it's just been... We've been blessed. We yeah. really have. Well, some of the things I'm going to talk about... Two things I'm going to, I'm going to hit on. And I can probably, tell a front, one funny story, too, if you don't hit it. But go ahead. Okay, so... We'll start with uh, our first trip to Africa. Brad and I, you know, we're we're hunting, we're bow hunting in a ground in a tree stand situation. I mean, that, these guys pulled a tree limbs together and put some boards up there, and they wired everything. I don't think there was a nail in that no, tree. Right. I mean, that, that's you know, third world country. We're in Zimbabwe, so they did what they had to do, but it was steady and and pretty big for yeah. you know the way they had to make it. So we're in a a tree out in the middle of kind of a savanna. And you could see the edge of some thick timber and stuff where they were coming down off the mountain. And, you know, we kind of had animals divided up. You well, know, we you were going to shoot a warthog. I was going to shoot an orby. You were going to, you know, this and that and the other. So we're sitting there and still, you know, third world, world countries, you're still getting a Coke out of a glass oh. bottle. And um, we're there for a while. Yeah. So we had to pay, take, you know, once we drink our Coke, that's our pee bottle. So it's like, well, I got a pee, but I got a lot of Coke left. So what am you know? So I'm gonna drink my Coke. So, anyways, we had an empty bottle there, glass bottle, and Call of Nature hits Brad, and uh, he stands up to take a leak, and I'm on I'm on the lookout. I'm looking, glass and glass, and all of a sudden I see some warthogs on the edge of the timber, and Brad's doing his business, and just I said, there's some warthogs coming in. He drops that bottle. And he could never do it again in a million years. He drops that bottle and it lands perfectly flat. P comes straight up and goes right back in the same hole. And I'm just sitting over there like, he's like, where they at? Do it again. And I'm like, do it again. He's like, where they at? I was like, right, right there. It's so a talent. Yeah. I mean, my, I, I don't know if I really want to see it again, but I was amazed. And then the other time, and... This goes in Kansas, where it was eight degrees. So we sat. That was the high. That was the high. So we sat in the tree that the day before and saw 19 deer. So we don't kill anything. So I have the idea of, you know, tomorrow we're going to do that all day sit. We're going to get it done. We're ready to get home. And I think you'd been out there two or three, two, well, not two or three weeks, but at least a week, a week before, you before got I got there. And you'd already tagged out. So I had a cameraman. All that's good. So... I tell Brad, we're hunting all day tomorrow, knowing, you know, it might get to 13. And he's like, okay. I said, I'm serious. So pack your pee bottles, bottles, two, three, whatever you need. Bring you something to eat, something to drink, and plenty of clothes because we're sitting all day. He's still like, there's no way we're sitting all day, but okay. So long about 12 o'clock, he's like, we ought to be getting down here shortly. One o'clock, 1.30 rolls around. Okay, this has to be any time we're going to get down to, to go eat, you know. We're hungry. We're cold. I mean, it was one of them mornings where when we saw a deer, we only saw four that whole day. Yeah. 
you didn't take your hand out of your pocket to reach for your bow till they were in bow range. I would same run, thing I would with move the, camera. the camera, and then I'd put my hand back. Right, it was miserable. So we sit all day. It gets about four thirty, and Brad he told me all this later. Well, we're gonna get down now and go on in and just call it a day. We done sat here for about ten hours, and then it rolls around about five o'clock. He finally realized we're gonna sit all day. <laughs> and we sat all day. I mean, we watched the sun go all the way around us. Yep. So we get down. Or I get down first. Brad climbs down. He gets on the ground, and he's got a 40-pound pack on with all the camera gear and extra clothing and all. He falls over, looks like a turtle on his back, trying to get up. And I'm trying to help him. He's like, get your dadgum hands off of me. I was like, what's wrong with you? Sit all day. Who sits all day in this? Are you kidding me? I was like, man, we, we saw 19. I don't care how many deer we saw. We're not doing this again. Been I'm, there, done that, right. not doing it again. So he didn't talk to me all the way back to the truck. Yeah, that was one of my, my favorite hunts yeah. for sure. All right, now we get about to get serious. Mm -hmm. We're right in the heart of hunting season and football season. So what's your favorite college football team? Roll Tide. Oh, I hear you. Roll Tide, baby. <laughs> All day. And Brad, what I'm is your... stuck between them. <laughs> War Eagle. Yeah, okay. So, Corey, what you got? Go dogs. <laughs> but we got all the good teams yeah, covered so, anyway. Yeah, we got the good part of the Southeast Conference covered. But how, so I'm not even going to ask Corey how he became a Georgia fan because everybody asks me that all the time. So, when he was uh, about 10 or 12, I can't remember exactly the age, we were all at the house watching Georgia Alabama game. And Georgia happens to win the game late in the game they pull out a miraculous matthew stafford aj green yeah so there you go not a lot of talent lucky win so at that point in time in his life they are the team so from that point forward he's been a georgia bulldog fan and how many times have y'all beat the tide since doesn't matter pass. <laughs> <laughs> zero i keep not telling year, him right? i keep telling him hey anytime you want to come back over yeah, come on come on <laughs> you know but he said he's not a bandwagon, so I can appreciate that. And 95% of the people that are my age are bandwagon, so I'm yeah, about that. Right, so I, I respect your loyalty to the team. I mean, hey, if they're not playing Alabama, I'm pulling for Georgia. Me and Brad, too. when y'all are not, well, no, anyway. That's different. I can't yeah. do that. I'm not that's yeah, different. different. <laughs> Whoever is playing Auburn, that's who I'm pulling for. Right, That's there's a different animal when you talk to Alabama. I mean, but you're the same way. You'll pull for Georgia. Oh, yeah, I pull for them against everybody but Auburn. Right, I mean, and I'm happy, you know, I'll be honest with you. I've I've lightened up a little bit since, you know, we're such good friends. You're Al you're an Auburn fan, and my wife graduated from Auburn. Did I just say that out loud? Yes, you did. <laughs> so, kind of lightened up a little bit. I know she would be like, what? You've lightened up? No way. But I have my dislike for them has shrunk just a little bit. But it's all in fun. I mean, you know, it's part of it. It's kind of, you know, it kind of fits in with hunting season, and we enjoy picking on each other. And Well, you know, we've been doing this for 19 years total yeah. since we've been hunting together, yeah. 15 as a company. And you can just say that there's been a lot of interesting conversations and hunting trips when – Alabama and Auburn play. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. We've watched a lot of games in the truck, listened to a listened lot of games in the, the truck. truck. I've listened or watched the games in the blind, you know, when it's on your phone in, in Kansas. So, you know, we, we're not missing the game, even though it's hunting season. Yeah. We're going to be listening to it or watching it if, if we can on our phone. And But you got to have the right spot to do that, obviously. But we're huge football fans. We love the uh, college game. So, Well, what is your dream hunt, if you could – do anything that you wanted to. My dream hunt would probably be going to Montana. Uh, my grandfather he passed away whenever I was real young, um, but he all, he took my brother and a couple of my other cousins up there on a few hunting trips, and I never got to go. So I've always said that that you know, yeah, I'm gonna go there before I die. Now you got to go there. It's beautiful out there. Yes. We, I've been fortunate enough to hunt there several times, and it is absolutely gorgeous. And Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, Utah, yeah. all those Karen's places. actually from Montana. Yeah, my wife actually was born in Montana. Her oh, grandpa. Really? And oh, she yeah. said it was too cold. We're not living here. And Brad's like, but, but. She's like, you have not lived here in the winter, so don't but, but me. <laughs> so my goal is to one day have a home away from home up there. You almost had one saying, that one time. Yeah, yeah, if I could have talked her into it. <laughs> <laughs> She's regretting that movie. Yeah, for sure. 
Well, that may be one thing that down the line we can help with because we do get to go out west, fortunately, and uh, so maybe, maybe one day we can get both you guys to go out there with us and experience that with us as well. So yeah, would it would be, be awesome. Fun. Well, guys, you know, you're going to probably see Corey and Ashley with us from time to time, and our hope is that Brad and I aren't going to be sitting behind this desk all the time. We're going to be out doing some hunts, and one or both of them are coming in with maybe David or Greg, kind of host a podcast. They'll have some topics, may have some guests in at that time. But we'll also be Skyping out in the field yeah, where, we'll you, in field. where you, you and I may be. And, uh, you know, you kind of check in on my old man and see how the hunting's going. And while we're 17 days into a hunt in Kansas and it's eight degrees and we ain't killed nothing yet. So we'll explain all that. Talk about how gray your beard is. Yeah, how gray <laughs> Brad's we'll beard is. We'll talk about that. But that's, so we want to introduce you guys to Corey and Ashley. So uh, you kind of get the feel for where they come from. I mean, they got a drive and a passion, but also they got a life outside of hunting but they're grounded in, you know, what they do. And, you know, I like to think I raised him right. You know, I've had a lot of compliments on it. So I, I think I did. I think and did obviously you can tell, you know, Your her passion and, right and, too. and too. yeah, they did right with her, but sure. yeah. That's well guys, we've had a great time here today. Hopefully you enjoyed listening to Corey and Ashley talk. Make sure you join us again here in two weeks for more the challenge podcast brought to you by Raider Concealment. Hey guys, if you like this video, please hit the like button below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And do not forget to ring that bell so you will get a notification when we upload our new videos.